Hey guys, welcome to LA Love Creative, and today we're doing something a little different. Um, I had a lot of requests to do a editing video, something that I haven't done in a long time on this channel. So in this video, I will give you my dirty secret on how to edit photos really fast using a couple tips and tricks that I have picked up on, also some new software that I just got that'll speed up your workflow. For an uh, image like this, this is just for an uh, agency. This is not a client. If I'm doing client work, I do all my coloring later. I'll just you know mess with like basic color correction. Then I'll do my skin retouching, and then I'll go to you know back to Lightroom and do my coloring there. But in a situation like this, I don't care. The client's not going to care. So I will put some of my presets on this image. I have a selection of presets on my website. So one of the presets I like to use is my favorite preset, which is LA Love Creative 1, preset 1. Preset 2 is a little bit more green. Preset 3, there's a lot of blue in the shadows. It's doing kind of the teal and orange look on that one. Preset 4, once again, very green, a little bit more like that. Preset 5 is even more blue in the shadows. It's even more of that teal and orange look. And preset 6 is even extremely more warm. It's warmer than preset one. It's pretty much like extreme warmth. Use preset one. It's the one I use pretty much on most of my images. So after we have exported it, let's pull up Photoshop and let's get to the magic. So now that we're in Photoshop, one of the first things I like to do is duplicate the layer, duplicate the image. When it comes to spot reduction, one of the things I like to do is I like to zoom in and get rid of anything that's really a distraction. I will get rid of some stuff in the background. Remember, we're not trying to waste too much time on this quick edit. I like to use a spot healing brush because I find it's a little bit more snappy. So when I'm going through and get rid of things that are, you know, blemishes, anything weird with the skin, I find it's a little bit more snappy. If I need to get more deeper, I will use the spot healing brush because you can get a little bit more smoother when it comes to areas. But I like to use a spot and it makes it a little bit faster. Um, the next thing I like to do is I like to mess with the hair a little bit. Um, I find that the more I mess with the hair, the more it starts to look kind of fake and kind of, you know, weird. Get rid of a little bit of the stray hairs and keep it somewhat natural without overdoing it. But on a quick edit, if you spend too much time doing something, 30 minutes doing something, an hour doing something, it's no longer a quick edit. So if you find that you are messing with the hair or you're messing with the skin for too long, Keep it moving and just move on. So the thing I'm gonna do with the hair is I'm going to start some new layers and I'm going to use the clone brush. And when I'm using the clone stamp tool, conceal the stray hairs with the wall behind her. And I want it to look more natural, so I'm gonna use a lower opacity and kind of just brush in there. Now what I like to do to clean up the edges a little bit is I use a eraser tool and I just erase around the edges of the hair with a lower opacity and flow so that it's a little bit more subtle and that some of the stray hairs are there, but I just want it to look a little bit more natural. Click that on and off. And now that we've clicked it on and off, I think that looks pretty natural. So now that I've cleaned up the skin, I've cleaned up the hair, I've only spent a little bit of time doing that. My next step that I really like to do is I like to use my software that I just got. So this new software I got is called Retouch For Me. They have plugins that use AI-based technology. This is not sponsored at all. I wish it was. Um, and it's basically a filter that will do certain actions with the click of a button. So one of the actions I purchased that costs about 100 bucks, $120 or something like that, is called Dodge and Burn by Retouch For Me. So how do you use it? You go to filter and you go down to Retouch For Me. You put it on your image. It will automatically adjust the image and try to dodge and burn for you. Now, once it's done, I like to increase the intensity a little bit, maybe like make it 130. Cool. And now you can see, if you look before and after, it's subtle, but what it's doing is dodging and burning the whole image. If you look, it even does the full body. If you look towards the legs and look towards the chest. Now, you can stop right there. Now, after you do the dodge and burning there, if you're really in a, in a pinch and you need to move really quickly and do a lot of images really quickly, 
put the dodge and burn retouch for me plugin on there and keep it moving. However, if you want to fine tune it a little bit, the next step I like to do, so what I'm going to do is pretty controversial. I don't know, a lot of photographers do this, a lot of retouchers do this. I'm going to paint on her skin. Literally, I'm going to paint on her skin to make it even more airbrushed. Now, how do you paint on the skin? So one of the things you're gonna do is use a brush around 4%, 3% flow, really soft brush. You're going to sample an area on her skin. You're gonna sample area on the skin and brush, sample brush. And when you do this, I, I advise using a very big brush because it'll cover a lot more area, it'll look more natural. And don't worry about getting it on the eyes, don't worry about getting in the lips, on the clothes, because when you are doing that, you are later gonna fix that. So now if you've painted on the skin, you're wondering, you got it all in the eyes, you got it all, all over the body, you're just gonna use the eraser tool and you're going to basically just get rid of all the areas that you don't want the paint. Now, after you do that, you might think to yourself, it still looks too much. So the next step you're going to do is just lower the opacity on the whole layer. Turn it down to around 50, 60, something like that. And now you have a more natural paint painting um, going on on the skin tone. So after that step, the next step I like to do is I like to do a little bit of dodging and burning, even though we have the retouch for me plugin. I like to do a little bit of accentuating on the highlights and the shadows. I like to use the dodge and burn tool on Photoshop. I keep it around 10% when it comes to the exposure, keep it in the mid-tones. All I'm doing is literally highlighting. If something is a highlight, I just do a little, little brushing on it. If it is a, you know, more of a shadow or a dark area, I will accentuate that. So then, same thing with that layer. After you've done that, I usually turn it down and I will turn them down to about like 50, sometimes like 40%, just cause I want it to be very, very subtle. Now, that's my quick edit. I usually don't spend too much time on this. I'm, you're talking about, you know, 10 to maybe 15 minutes. Now, this is the before of the image of Chevelle, awesome model that I shot. Before, after, before, after. Now I'm not a professional retoucher. These are only a few tricks I use when I'm in a pinch. If I have the time, I like to obviously spend more time on these images and really finesse them and make them look perfect. However, in this video, this is all about hacks on how to do the job extremely fast if you ever need to in a pinch.